welcome back to our live coverage of the Senate runoff in Georgia. I'm John Arula, still joined by Dr. Rashad Ritchie and Michael Shore. Thank you guys for being here. I guess here. I won that. Thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he's supposed he's to be here, he's not here, and he just didn't I, come yeah. back. So, but <laughs> no, don't worry, yeah. in the absence of Jenk, I will be filling that role both in leading the show and I'm gonna start throwing things at Michael any second Great. now. All right, that's good. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we got a lot that we're gonna dive into in this hour. First, quick update. Herschel Walker had been up by for a little bit, for a while. Raphael Warnick now up by 1.2. He must have stopped off to get a quick chug of water at the roadside, and now he has sped <laughs> and up. Now and he's that, right because and I think is, you can see yeah. the finish line. Uh, we've got 77% of the vote in. Um, in a second, I want to just explain a little bit of why I might be, I, I guess, weirdly confident. I suppose we'll jump into that in a second. I want to read a few of your comments first. Um, Benjamin GL sent it a super chat saying, "Guys, I think I broke Jank again." Was it Benjamin's comment? Yeah, it was off? his. It yeah, was? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, they know how to. They know how to poke the bear. Uh, Zero says, hello everyone, question. How much is Biden screwing over the rail union workers having an effect in this race? Uh, I would love for that to be the sort of thing that would have a direct measurable impact on a race in a short period of time. I'm guessing that that probably is not a big I mean, single impact. I, 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 I think was. Rashad would know better than I. I was down sure. there for five, for five four, four days or something, and nobody was talking about the rail strike at any of the places that I went. And not that you know that means anything. They were talking about you know beating Biden and uh, and and beating Warnock, and that's really what was motivating a lot of the Walker voters. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, people who were covering the Democrat there, covering Warnock, going to the Obama rally. They may have heard more about that. I didn't hear anything of substance, really. Yeah, Rashad, real no, quick, is not, that something? Not with, that not with st uh, statistical significance. Let me yeah. put it that way. Obviously, there are people concerned about it, uh, but it, I don't think it weighed into this election standard here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And what would Georgia know about a Pullman strike anyway? Really? I, I'm sure you're referencing <laughs> a very specific historical event. I am, John. I you can know. look it up. And it's, uh, it's, I'll wiki you'll, it. You'll find it. The uh, E.D. Nixon stuff, you'll get to Thank it. you. Uh, who's that? Uh, no, Rhett no, Proctor says, no. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, but it's absolutely embarrassing that Herschel Walker got that many votes. I don't understand how someone with a brain can vote for him. Yeah, well, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Michael, this is an older super chat, says, dude, Walker's winning. What in the actual F? Well, don't worry, as of right now, Warnick's still up. <laughs> Uh, Bill B says, werewolves for Warnick, the vamps can have the idiot. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, look, Walker wanted the werewolves. I guess they turned their furry backs on him at the last moment. Um, we're gonna read more of your comments in a second. Okay, so I just wanna explain briefly why I'm a little bit confident. Uh, so that if Warnick wins, I can claim credit. And if Walker wins, then you guys can have fun mocking me, I suppose, I don't know. So anyway, um, if we could bring up the iPad, I wish that I could expand this list of counties, but unfortunately for some reason on the iPad, it's not letting me. Uh, right now we have slightly less than one quarter of the vote remaining. It is very, very close. It's a one, it's less than a one point race right now. But I would ask you, if you look at this list of counties and if you could expand it, which you can't, but I'm looking at the expanded list, where are the votes supposed to come from that are gonna win this thing? For Walker at this point, like I understand just seeing the top uh, six counties here, it obviously looks really bad for Walker, where the only big counties remaining, and I'm defining big as having more than uh, 40,000 estimated votes still to come in, are heavily expected to go for Warnick. But once you, once you drop below this, there's a few counties that have 35,000 votes. It's hard to say for sure. I'm not running through this like a, through a statistical program or something, but those look to be going towards Warnick at this point. And then it drops off after that to like very small counties. And even that is a mix. So look, I, I could be entirely wrong. I could be misreading this. I'm not Steve Kornacki. But looking at this, I don't know where a big swing of votes is supposed to come from. That's going to suddenly and you benefit don't, you, Walker. You don't have Chatham County on there, which is Savannah, which is where. Uh, Warnock is from. It's got 35,000 remaining. And it's, think? yeah, and it's 62% of the vote counted. So, I mean, that, that that's still a decent chunk that's going to go uh, most likely for uh, for uh, Raphael Warnock. Yeah. And and look, uh, yeah, actually, Rashad, maybe you can speak to this. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess, putting a lot of uh, weight to what their estimate of how many votes there will be. I believe that that should be updated based on the turnout. Like, like you had mentioned a previous county, and I looked it up, you were right. Even though only 40% of the vote was in, 
even once you get all of what they estimate, it is gonna be significantly fewer votes than in November. But based on what they think, I don't think he needs to have amazing turnout as long as it comes in the way that it's expected. But what do you think? I agree 100%. So you're looking at the drop off also for Walker, okay? Walker got a few hundred thousand votes less than the guy who won governor in his reelection. So there's a natural drop off. So literally, you gotta look at how this worked. In the general election, Republicans said yes to Governor Kemp, probably skipped Walker and voted for other local and statewide candidates. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think those individuals are motivated to come back out when they weren't even motivated to vote when they stepped into the ballot the first time or stepped into that ballot box the first time? Likely not. Um, if Herschel was a better, more transformational candidate, yeah. Now Warnock has a different type of problem. But here's another. But he also issue runs a I different think. type of campaign going into that. If he's, wouldn't you agree with that? Well, you you would hope, right? One right. Would hope, you would hope, would hope he does. Yeah. I, I don't, man. Listen. I know some of the people who are the strategists. I don't know about that. I think they kind yeah. of had this uh, figured out or you know mapped out before uh, these elements started to present themselves through the problematic background of Herschel Walker. Mm -hmm. But I will say this: even with a slim Warnock victory, he's in there now, right? Six years he'll be in. We've had to vote for Warnock five times already. People wow. forget that. The way Warnock came in was through a special election. And then it was a runoff. And then, so we've had to, and then the primary and, and runoffs in there. Fifth time we're voting for Warnock. Some people are fatigued by that, but other people are just very accustomed now to voting for Senator Warnock in a very short amount of time because he basically always goes into a runoff. Yeah. All right. Um, it is interesting to note that even with a slim victory, what have Republicans proven? They've proven that they can literally tell people to vote for a damn rock and still be competitive <laughs> in the state of Georgia. That's a problem for me. So what if they come with an actual credible candidate? Georgia has a problem. Yeah. If the demographics do not change in the state within that, those six years, or if you do not have some type of massive transformation of the Georgia voter, uh, Warnock will still have a have an issue after this term runs out. And people forget, Georgia used to be a democratic state in the recent history. Yeah. Um, roughly 20 years ago, Georgia had a democratic governor, democratic lieutenant governor, democratic secretary of state, democratic um, labor commissioner, and a democratic attorney general, a black man at that, all right? All of your statewide offices were occupied by Democrats in the state of Georgia in the not too distant past. Yeah. That changed in one election cycle, transformed the whole landscape. Um, so don't think just because there's a slim victory for Warnock, if that happens, you still have a hyper conservative state because every other statewide position is still held by Republican and the state still goes to the Republican uh, nominee for president. Virtually every time. Well, and part of what I was saying about you know when when my friend was talking about the Democratic Party and everything, is as you look at Georgia and they are doing something recently right. And it wasn't just David Perdue and, and Kelly Leffler and, and uh, presumably Herschel Walker who were bad candidates. It's the, now the Democrats have two senators from Georgia uh, who, are, who are in Capitol Hill. And, and if, if Warnock wins, it'll be another six years and, and Ossoff won recently. So I, I think you, there's something is, is you know, I, I just don't wanna criticize all the time because they've done something right there. And it's not just the fault of their candidates. And you're right, I, I understand. I would say of those three candidates, David Perdue was probably the most substantive, a previously elected wealthy Republican, clearly in the mold of, of uh, many Southern Republican and, and sort of the bill Millionaire class of senators or millionaire class of senators, but I, I don't think he was a pushover in the way that Leffler we thought was a real pushover, and now Walker we looked at as a bigger pushover. Would you agree with that, Rashad? I I, I do agree with that, but I, I think it's something important to highlight with Leffler and uh, Purdue. Uh, they lost because of Trump. Let, let's be real clear here, okay? Trump gets involved. He creates uh, friction between uh, the governor who's a Republican and these other Republican incumbents. 
he becomes a wrecking ball in the state of Georgia. He tells Republicans, don't come out and vote. These are rigged elections. Yep. And then surrogates start saying, started saying things like, don't vote until they change the election uh, machines or until they do another audit, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it depressed the vote of the Republican side by 4.1%. That's according to survey data after the election. 4.1% of Republicans said, we did not vote because of what Trump told us, okay? How many percentage points did Ossoff win by? It was within that margin. Yeah, okay. Okay, definitely, yeah. So that, that is an important element of this entire narrative here. That Republicans kind of defeated themselves, but it still took a very compelling campaign from Ossoff and Warnock. And it took a hyper turnout of Democratic vote to emerge at one time. And that intersection created the dynamic you have today. Two US senators are Democrats out of the state of Georgia. It doesn't mean you're gonna strike gold like that too many times. No, so something else has to change in the meantime to get a true reelection of a Democrat without Republicans either running a damn rock uh, as their nominee or imploding on themselves. Because yeah. you know they're gonna correct that. You know the Republicans That's after correct. this, That's is, right. they're going That's to correct right. that. So Democrats in Georgia have to learn to do the same. And I think that's what made Stacey Abrams such a hopeful figure. And you know she may remain so, it's why people, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I may be wrong, but they, they, they were looking at their mayor as someone who may have been that type of a figure at one time too. And, and so in Atlanta uh, with, with Keisha Lance Bottoms. So I, I think that there's probably a little bit of that. and, and you you know, and, and there is a rich Democratic history. It's a different kind of Democrat. I mean, I don't think you look at Zell Miller, uh, who, <laughs> who became a Republican, as the type of Democrat you want to model after. But there was with, with Sam Nunn and Weish Fowler and uh, who am I forgetting, yeah. uh, Max Cleland there, uh, mm -hmm. that were taken over by some of these Republicans who are, uh, you know, the Saxby Chambliss who ran a horrible campaign against Max Cleland. And they've changed that type of politics. So Democrats, and this supports what, what Jank and Rashad were saying earlier. Democrats do have to change the way they run. I, I was just talking about this one month truncated election, but I, they're gonna have to make big changes in Georgia to sustain this. And I think Rashad pointed that out very, very well just now. Yeah, I, I feel the, the urge to shout at you though. Well, you can I feel shout. like I should shout. <laughs> Anybody can shout. Like Any, anyone anyway, can shout. Um, you know I'm unflappable, John. Yeah, that is true. You did not flap you once. You are though, that's <laughs> um, yes, Yeah, look, I, I think it would be very easy for them to to choose a rock. Honestly, a rock would have a lot of advantages as a candidate. Very few rocks in Georgia or outside of it have ever held a gun to one of their domestic <laughs> partners' heads. Maybe they have they'll that choose maybe a better they'll, candidate, right. actually. Maybe they'll choose the rock. You know, maybe, you know, maybe. They about, say yeah. he leans right. conservative. Yeah. Well, um, also, it would be very easy for them to stop demonizing early voting and mail, mail in voting. Like, we sort of, we're now through two cycles of, well, yeah, of course they're gonna hate that. I mean, Trump is still posting on Truth Social about mail in voting being illegitimate. Right. But let's remember, there's no ideological reason why they should be opposed to it. I mean, I know that they're ideologically opposed to people participating in democracy. They don't want a democracy and they certainly don't want people to vote in it. But inside of that, they can benefit from mail-in voting just as much as anyone else. They could easily drop that if they dropped Trump, who came up with it in the first place. And actually this morning on Fox and Friends, they were talking about that, about the need to potentially pivot on early voting and mail-in voting. Because yep. why are you needlessly giving away votes that you could otherwise have? You make uh, a great point, John, and I wanna say this quickly. You know who passed the laws to allow for absentee voting and early voting in the state? Republicans did. Republicans passed that law. Yeah. yeah. Well, as of right now, we're still sitting at just under 80% of the vote. Uh, we've got a, ooh, now narrower, a 0.28% lead for Raphael Warnick, but again, I'm. Look at a Fulton County and there's a lot of votes there. I mean, I'm not ready to yet say that there's as many in Fulton County as there is in the rest. That's not true. In Cobb and DeKalb, there is just about as much, but there are not a lot of big storehouses of Republican votes here. Also, I just want to mention, I saw an analysis of the first, I think it was 92 counties where more than 95% of the vote was in. So we had a pretty good idea of exactly how more than half of Georgia's counties had voted and there were a lot of rural uh, conservative counties there, and they estimated that across all of those, Walker lost about 0.3 points, which is, he can't do that. Like he's got to do better in the blue counties, he's got to do better in the red, and he just, he wasn't. Um, and if you look at some of these red counties along the border, the north northern border of, of Georgia, you're seeing 
uh, Raphael Warnock in all but one of about seven or eight or nine counties up there getting to 20 percent. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but that's not something that can be sustained by Herschel Walker in this race in order for him to win. Yeah. He needs to just, just sort of blow, have blowouts, 22 percent, 25 percent. There's a 21, a, a 22. I mean, so you go across that. that and it doesn't mean anything because we don't know the full numbers, but it's over 95 percent uh, reporting in small counties. But these are the ones that are going to make up that small margin. And if Herschel Walker can't get them, mm -hmm. then that, that's where he falls short. Yeah, 100 percent. Well, uh, look, we're obviously going to continue to follow the numbers. We do have to take a break. But when we come back, I want to finally get to some of Michael's videos. Let's start talking about a little bit about the psychology of the enthusiastic or even reluctant uh, Walker voter. We'll get to that more after this. Uh, we are going to get into some fun videos in just a second. I did want to update you uh, just in case a shiver hasn't run down your spine recently. Herschel Walker's in the lead again. It's right, narrow. It's very, though. very important that we remind people that Herschel Walker's winning the race right now. Exactly. Yeah. Remember that going forward, people. It means and absolutely nothing right now. It, but, but the race. Right. right anyway, right. I want to read a couple of comments. Uh, Super Saint sent in a comment saying, if Walker wins abortions for all, Exactly. You might be pressured into them, though. Anyway, um, Tyrone says, I'm in Chatham County, and I just voted for Raphael a few hours ago. That's awesome. Okay. Chatham County is uh, is where uh, where Savannah is, which is Raphael Warnock's home county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, I should probably wait until Jank is back to needlessly open this wound again. But Michael is wrong. If Republicans put up a Kemp-style candidate, Warnock loses with the strategy the Democrats keep using. I would say I'm assuming Michael would say that ideally you would not then use that no, same strategy. Of course not. I'm but saying they, they made a decision to base their their strategy that that uh, that Dr. Ritchie critiqued, that Jenk more than critiqued, um, but because based on Herschel Walker being the candidate, mm -hmm. it would be a foolish I don't strategy. Know. I, you, well, you, you say, the, the, you you say, say that, no, you know, and you know more than I because you've been speaking to some of these people, right? And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it from a, a greater distance than you are without the intimacy of knowing these people and what they were saying before sure. they even knew who the candidate was. But as soon as they knew or there was a likelihood that Herschel Walker was gonna be the candidate, uh, that the Democratic incumbent center was going to have to run against, they decided to run a certain type of race so that that person, that the campaign would be about defining that person. If you had a Brian Kemp running against mm -hmm. Raphael Warnock, first of all, it would be a blowout, uh, unfortunately. And second of all, uh, you run an entirely different race. And if they went with this strategy, then I would be as angry as Jank is. About. But let me say this just well, quickly, and yeah. we can get back to the comments. Um, they have coordinated the campaign around Georgia voters rather than around the political opponent. I actually agree with you, sir, that they should have. Uh, but they have always measured the potential response of the voter rather than the potential response of the opponent. Well, which proves to me that they are running campaigns predicated on a Georgia voter or Georgia voters uh, opposite of them rather than running a campaign okay. um, of the or connected to the opposition candidate itself. But Rashad, um, don't so you that, think, that, don't you think those are somewhat intertwined, right? If you're running it on the voter, you're, you're basically relying upon the voter to judge your opponent for who they're trying to frame their opponent as yeah, being. Yeah, I think there's some connection. There. Yeah. It, it definitely, it's definitely some connection. But the emphasis, brother, is my point. The emphasis should have always been on getting out the base vote. I agree with you on, on the point you made earlier about, you know, this is a different election. It's a one month turnaround. You're right. You know what runoffs have typically been about? Base turnout or nothing else. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not the most popular candidate based on natural demographics, you can win an upset in a runoff because you're the most exciting Democrat to who? Not moderates, right. not people in the middle, not people on the other side, but your own base. Mm -hmm. And to me, that could have been done in a surgical way, in a surgical way as to not create an opposition response from the other side. And I don't think they mastered that, even though the strategy is still a decent strategy. Okay, so we're about to jump into a video. Something very weird just happened. Uh, I all of a sudden saw the New York Times needle bury itself in the Warnick winning. And I was like, oh my God, did a bunch of votes just drop? No, nothing has dropped. I don't know what's up. Has, has the needle been drinking? I get it. Uh, I, right. I get it. It's I at, see it as well. It's at ninety-five percent. I, you know, um, I, I think it was listening to us explain that earlier. 
Right, and so they <laughs> yeah they figured that, that that was the case. Yes. Okay. Well. Um, okay. So he's gonna win, but everybody, let's have some fun. Okay. Nobody go anywhere. We don't know that he's gonna win. No, no, by he's the definitely way. gonna win. Okay. Um, I, I just feel <laughs> confident. I'm looking spirit. at the numbers, and uh, uh, when have numbers or norms ever failed us? Never, ever, ever. I ever. Can't imagine. Right. Anyway, with that said, let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, Michael, you spoke with a lot of uh, Herschel Walker voters, supporter, enthusiastic supporters, the people who would not begrudgingly vote for Herschel Walker to be a vote for the MAGA movement, but would go to one of his rallies. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Herschel has said, he said in a book that he has multiple personality disorder, but he's beaten it, he's cured it. Doctors say that there's no cure to that. Um, I'm talking about voting for somebody, sending them to Washington to be a senator uh, with that malady. Does that give you pause at all? No, not at all, not at all. I mean, I can't believe in Pennsylvania they voted for Fetterman and he's a lot worse off. Uh, we, you know, I can't believe they voted for Fetterman. I've heard him speak several times. He's an incredible person. Yeah, he had some stumbles and he addresses it and he learned from it. And he says God uses him uh, and built him from that. But um, I, I am 100% behind him. Fetterman had a stroke. Right. That's a medical thing. It happens to many people. That's it. That's it. He also, by the way, has served in government at multiple levels for many years. Now, granted, he doesn't have a badge, okay? He doesn't carry around a fake badge that he got at Party City. <laughs> so that's a downside for Fetterman. But other than that, he's a serious guy who talks about the actual issues. It is absurd that you would conflate the two. But also, I just want to briefly say, and I understand that this is something that just gets under my skin or whatever. Um, saying that he acknowledges his problems. First of all, no, he very much does not. Yes, he has written a book about some of those problems. He has also refused to address many of the worst scandals, okay? When your son comes out publicly and say that you terrorized them out of multiple homes, clearly physically abused them, and you refuse to even acknowledge that, let alone explain it, and that didn't happen 20 years ago, that was much more recent, then don't tell me about how you've addressed all of your actual problems. This is not just an issue of the lies that he told over the last 20 years. He continued as a candidate to tell insane lies about his work history, about his history as an FBI agent, about any number of different things. And then on the religious thing, I understand the concept of forgiveness is a, is a very big one, especially for certain religious communities, I understand that. But there is a difference between asking for forgiveness and just loudly telling everyone that you've been given it over and over and over again. So shut up and stop asking me about these scandals. Stop asking me about how I wanted to go murder someone because I'm telling you I was forgiven. Shut up. That is not what that process is supposed to be like. It is not supposed to be a one and done. You now are a great person and you can lord it over everyone else. And the people who in their interviews with you would talk about how forgiveness is important. I would really love to ask some follow up questions about how broad based their forgiveness would be. Is it just for Republican Senate candidates or would you apply that to other people who have fallen short in aspects of their life along the way? I have a feeling it's probably pretty limited well, who they'll dole yeah, that forgiveness you, out to. You do run into a great deal of hypocrites, hypocrisy with these with a lot of these people who say, well, this person has asked for forgiveness or this person made some mistakes. And they'll very often say to me, well, you know, who, who's perfect among us, right? But they're gonna say that because Raphael Warnock allegedly owns a building that people have been, from which people have evicted, and that's a, a longer story, that his imperfection is worse than Herschel Walker and what his imperfections are. So they start comparing these things and they have this kind of sort of disconnect from what is reality mm -hmm. because they want an excuse to be able to vote for their person who has an R who is so flawed and so you know objectively because I've covered many, many, many candidates, objectively one of the very worst candidates I've ever seen stand for yeah. an office like this. Let me speak to the negatives of Warnock. Um, over and over again, we have been subjected to commercials in the state of Georgia about Warnock evicting people. Right. Uh, that is a lie. Uh, Warnock did not evict anybody. Uh, the evictions they are referencing actually predate Warnock being pastor of Ebenezer. And, yeah. um, and there are some evictions that took place obviously while he was the pastor, but the ones that were egregious, uh, those were the ones that predated him. Uh, in addition to that, 
Ebenezer as a church, uh, as, as an organization, it actually does own property. Uh, they have an administrative pastor. That administrative pastor takes care of the administrative dy- dynamic of the church so that the pastor, i.e. Raphael Warnock, uh, can focus on the dynamics of the ministry. Uh, they have had that kind of system in place since the days of Dr. King, all right? So they, they want to attribute this to the pastor when the functional control of these dynamics are very different internally for the church itself. And let me also highlight something that uh, my dear brother John said, and I agree with you 100%. Forgiveness, uh, even to me, is a powerful dynamic. I'm a man of faith. Um, I try not to be religious, but I do know this. Without acknowledgement, you cannot believe in the transformation of anybody. If you're not willing to acknowledge the mistakes that you have made, to honestly acknowledge them, I have a hesitation believing that you have transformed from anything. We've all made mistakes, we will make more. But typically transformation is coupled with true acknowledgement. That's one thing Herschel Walker has never done on this campaign trail. I agree. And these people say that he has, and these people, and and just for point of reference here, when I was talking about Warnock, I wasn't talking about that as being fact, I'm talking about what they are saying. Well, know. Like, I'm, you know, I'm right, presenting know the that. worst thing they've said about Warnock. And, and, and so it, it does, you know, you try, when you're there and speaking to them, you just like, to, I, I say it's like opening a vein and letting them bleed. You just talk to them and hear what they have to say. Often it's astonishing, sometimes it's thoughtful, it's very often real. And when you go to these these events for, these are more substantive people than you would see at a Save America Donald Trump rally. When I say substantive, these are people who allege that they are religious, who seem more educated, who seem totally divorced from the idea of QAnon and those sorts of things. I'm not speaking about all of them, but many of the ones that both Zephyr Thrall, who shoots this with me, shot these with me, and myself found. And and you know, so you're you're dealing with a different type of audience at these kinds of things. But they are people, like you said, John, take time out of their day to show up to an event. And that mm-hmm. event is, is has uh, Herschel Walker surrounded by Lindsey Graham and a newly elected um, uh, African American. Uh, and I say that because it's very important what they're trying to paint. Lindsey Graham got out there and said, let's increase our diversity, let's get more women. And then they put Herschel Walker up there and it's an embarrassment. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned some of the surrogates that he's been appearing with. It is possible that some voters were confused about exactly who the candidate was since they have not seen Herschel Walker in a TV interview without at least one other senator flanking him for at least a month now. Maybe they think they're voting for Ted Cruz, um, which will probably doom Herschel Walker as well. Um, Okay, that said, man, this hour is passing by fast. Why don't we take a look at a little bit more of uh, what you were able to get? Well, I've been supporting Herschel for over 40 years since he was at Georgia. USFL, NFL, now he's gonna run for the Senate, so I'm gonna support him, so that's why I'm here. And what about the politics of it? I mean, a lot of people are giving him a little flack for not being up to the job of Senator, even some Republicans in Georgia saying, look, you're, you were a great football player, but you might not be up to the task of Senate. Does, how do you feel about that? Well, he was bullied when he was little, and then he overcame that, excelled, and now he's being bullied by the left. I think he will excel and be an excellent Senator. I'm a Bulldog fan. I've seen Herschel play twice, played Georgia Tech two years in a row. And uh, anybody that don't vote for Herschel should never be allowed to say, go dogs ever again. So it's about the football for you. No, it's it's about he's a man that believes the same way I do. And I really don't give a rip about all this talk, you know, political talk. Okay, so but you're being wait, asked wait. about politics. I know, I know. They, they, first of all, this that guy gets credit for saying, "I don't give a rip." It's I a like great, that. Yeah, it's a great I way like of, of speaking. Uh, but, but you know, this is serious business. The United States Senate is serious business, and you have people that are going to these things who say, "I've been supporting Herschel for forty years." because I've been a dogs fan and then I followed him to the USFL, a defunct, now defunct football league for those who don't follow it. And and the idea that that is enough for some of these people uh, and that he was bullied when he was mm-hmm. a kid, that's enough for some of them. That, that Joe Biden was bullied, I guess that guy voted for Joe Biden because he was bullied because he had a stutter when he was a kid, right? <laughs> I, I mean, the, the people find the most convenient ways of, of, of excusing themselves for voting for this guy and, you know, Occasionally, there are candidates that you see where people are almost apologetic, but they're saying, I'm definitely yeah. doing it. It's just, it's, I guess, 
credit to you for being willing to admit that that's why. That because you like them as an athlete, because <laughs> right. you have dog loyalty. At least loyalty, you're open about it, right. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I understand that once you've got that dog in you, it never goes away. I don't, right. I, George R. R. Martin this. is one of my favorite authors. If he's gonna fight in the UFC, I'm probably not gonna back him. And I don't think that that's me being a bad, a Song of Ice and Fire fan. <laughs> These are different worlds, you don't have to try to link them. Sorry, Rashad. Yeah, no, they appreciate the fact that Herschel Walker cannot independently think or solve problems or actually become a conscious individual against things like racism, sexism, fairness is something that he doesn't talk about in proper context. They appreciate that about Herschel Walker. And remember, what is football? Why do they appreciate Herschel Walker and his connection to football. Why? Because that it attains them. That entertains them. Run, Herschel, run. Yeah. That's it. You are here for our pleasure. Run these plays as we tell you to run them and make us happy. And that's exactly the correlation to why they are comfortable with an absent minded, unqualified black male running as their champion. Because he becomes a mirror reflection of who they are, because he has no idea who the hell he is. Right, and he's the perfect fit for that. Because I mean, there's an old saying that I'm not going to say now that would define what people would say about Herschel Walker, and and I, and that fits that mold completely. And and also, I think it's important to note that that it's the comfort factor that you feel from these people. There's almost a pride. And look at me, I'm a Georgia white guy in my 60s, I'm voting for a black man. And, right. and, and there is that, that's, that, that's sort of like my get out, of, uh, get out of racism free card, and that doesn't work. Listen, there's, a, there's a, an adage from the South uh, where a Southerners would say, run in word run. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping it 100 with everybody. Yeah. Uh, that's racist, obviously. Okay, one of the people you interviewed, sir, his hat said what? USA. Ron Herschel. Over Ron Herschel. Ron. Ron. That's the saying. You know, I was saying it's USA. the same thing. Uh, he knows exactly what code he's talking when he does. That, right. In the South, especially, he's wearing the gear that points directly to the sentiment of why they yeah. are supporting him. Well, uh, we're running low on time. Uh, I want to go to one more of the videos, though. I know in the next hour, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other big political figures and how what this is looking like it's going to lead to might affect them in the future. But the topic of Joe Biden came up. So uh, why don't we see what they thought about that? He's just like a homeboy. That's what we like. We just, he, he's one of us. You know, we're human beings and he knows our values. And we just want somebody that's just like us. To me, the government's just corrupt. And we need people that has worked a job like we've worked. We've gone to college, you know, and have done all this work that a lot of the, like Joe Biden, I don't think he's ever worked like a normal job. The stuff that concerns me is um, the price of gas, the price of food, food, five dollars for a loaf of bread is really outrageous. Same way the gallon of milk, even eggs. One thing I've learned in politics, and, and is that is that blame you assign to Warnock or to Biden or to Trump or to? It's Biden's fault. Partial represents the uh, the state I want to live in, the way I want to live my life, his values, and I. Um, I really believe he will represent Georgians, not represent Joe Biden. Rashad, I want to start off with you because I know we don't have you for much longer. What did you think of their read of uh, Herschel versus Joe Biden and their life and work experience? The the one person, <laughs> the one person I actually kind of have a little respect for is the guy that talked about bread and gas. Right? Mm -hmm. At least those are issues. Okay, um, uh, I guess compared to uh, Biden, Herschel Walker has never had a real job uh, because running a football is. A real everyday job. <laughs> uh, I, I don't listen, man. It, it's it's insane uh, when the the young lady said that Herschel Walker is a homeboy. Come on, man. Yeah. Like the they have nothing to really point to other than he's going to carry their water. That's it. They might as well just say it. Run, Herschel, run. Carry this water, and let's continue to do exactly what we've done. We are okay with putting a black face. In front of a white agenda, a white bigoted agenda at that, that's adversarial to the progress of the community that produced you. 
they are fine with that kind of black person. If you ever saw the movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Jimmy Stewart, oh, yeah. Gets, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Stewart gets down there and all these people in Washington feel like they're gonna be, manipulate the hell out of this guy. Jefferson Smith coming in from Maine, appointed to this seat because they knew that they could just make him do whatever they wanted him to do. That was the feeling I got with, with Herschel Walker, that these yeah. people like Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott and Tom Cotton and Rick Scott come into Georgia because they know that as soon as Herschel lands in Washington, they're going to go into that smoke filled room with these guys and they're going to get him to do everything they want him to do. That's right. And that's what these voters see. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we're down to just a, a minute or so, I think. I want to read a couple of your comments before we break for the hour. Um, Soul Controller says he ran the ball good so he can run the government good too. <laughs> Right, did yep. you see that Georgia uh, Tech game? Yeah. Mind Grifter says it's so funny that they talk about Joe Biden struggling with brain damage and dementia, but they talk about Walker as if he's a hero for dealing with his mental issues. Um, oh, uh, Brookmark says, gotta hand it to Doc. It's nearly 10 p.m. and later where Rashad is. Right. And he's got a crack of dawn radio show tomorrow. I've said it many times before, the man is a machine. <laughs> I had completely forgotten about, like I know my show's a little bit earlier. Yours is way earlier compared to what we're doing right now. Rashad, why are you still on this program? <laughs> Because I love you all. That's why. <laughs> it's love that feeds the engine of my heart. That, uh, Thank that you. wins. That Thank wins. You. And uh, you were a great running back, so I like you too for that. <laughs> um, the Portland Report says uh, 2024 is going to be The Rock versus Yay. Jeez. My God. No, That's so possible right. too. <laughs> Don't say Look, that. Don't say that. I will just say that so possible. The Rock was one of my favorite wrestlers through the 90s. And if so, if you don't support him for president. You've been supporting him for like 25 years. I have yeah, actually yeah. been supporting him for like 25 yeah. years. So do you really know what The Rock is cooking if you don't vote <laughs> you for don't. him for president? <laughs> you don't even have a people's elbow at that point. That's what I say. Yeah. Something, yeah. something, dog. Anyway, unfortunately, we do have to break for the hour. Uh, Michael, you're going to be sticking around. I guess I'm sticking I around. I believe, but uh, Rashad, it has been a pleasure to have you here. Not only because we're exactly. talking politics, that's always fun, but you being able to lend your great deal of expertise. In, uh, and in Georgia state. expertise and, and knowing Georgia the expertise. candidate, and knowing the team, and you don't get uh, intimate detail like that everywhere. So that's uh, valuable to this audience. Yeah, Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, everyone check out Indisputable on a daily basis, as well as that uh, radio show, which is, I think, live in eight minutes. So, <laughs> Rashad, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Everyone, we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.